A new interstellar object 100 times bigger and brighter than 3i Atlas has been discovered, and surprisingly, it is also headed toward the Sun. Astronomers first spotted it on September 12, 2025, using the Solar Wind and Isotropies, SWAN instrument aboard the SOHO spacecraft. Two days later, Australian comet expert Michael Mattiuso captured a jaw-dropping image. Its tail is 2-1 to 2 to long, about five full moons wide, completely dwarfing the tiny tail of Atlas. The International Astronomical Union has officially named it C2022R2 SWAN after its initial E, designation SWAN 25B. The announcement landed like a thunderclap because 3i Atlas, now the arrival of SWAN R2 even larger and stranger, has astronomers asking hard questions. So what exactly is going on in our solar system all at once? Is this a second probe, a relay, or something else entirely? Don't forget to subscribe for more Deep Space updates. At first, Evie Lobo and his team speculated it might have come from 3i Atlas itself, perhaps a fragment torn from a larger icy body, or even a scout craft released by a technological mothership lurking far out in space. But senior collaborator Peter Vess confirmed the truth is worse. They come from entirely different directions. Swan shrieks in from Aquarius. Thresi Atlas emerged from Sagittarius near the Milky Way's core, yet somehow they are converging on the Sun at almost the same time. The timing is impossible to ignore. Both will swing close to the Sun in October 2025, almost side by side on a cosmic scale. At perihelion, Swan will be about 150 million kilomots from the Sun, while 3i Atlas passes at 23 million kilots, a gap of only 50 million kilomots and shrinking as their velocities change. Even more ominous, they will both vanish behind the sun at once, hidden from every telescope on Earth. Two interstellar visitors, overlapping orbits, one solar encounter, and no way to see what happens next. Now, if you compare 3i Atlas with Swan R2, it feels like a warship next to a drone. Spectroscopic scans of 3i Atlas already stun scientists, a solid nickel body with no iron at all, a metal blend found only in advanced industry, not nature. Inside, instruments measured a 10 gigawatt nuclear core, and its tail behaved like engine thrust, not melting ice, emitting tightly collimated carbon dioxide at a steady speed, a pattern no natural comet produces as 3i Atlas nears the sun. It is exhaust snapped from red to green at the exact moment its path changed, which everyone calls thrust mix modulation. The craft adjusting its burn as heating increased, with the color shift visible proof. 3i Atlas was terrifying enough, but the real shock came with R2 Swan. Lobos, team detected a silver plasma shield, wrapped around a nickel-clad, armored hull that completely dwarfs the 3i Atlas. This isn't passive shielding. It's a living electromatronic barrier, with energy levels off the charts able to bend the solar wind and deflect radiation far beyond anything a solid shell could do. Its tail spans two full degrees of sky, about five full moons wide, roughly 100 times bigger than the thin plume trailing 3i Atlas as it needed perihelion. Swan's glow flared brighter and shifted to a white green exactly as Lobo's sensors picked up tiny thrust pulses, confirming a tiny precision plasma drive steering system. Its exhaust is a dense nickel and cobalt iron plasma mixed with carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, a signature Lobo calls impossible without a directed plasma engine. Then came the most terrifying finding. The core of 3i Atlas has already shocked the world with its 10 gigawatt nuclear reactor, about 50 times the output of typical reactors. But Swan's plasma core outputs more than 10,000 gigawatts. A power level Lobo compares to two black holes colliding, scaled and contained inside a single machine. In Lobo's words, 3i Atlas was only the scout. Swan R2 is the fortress, a nickel coulomb plasma vessel with a power core beyond comprehension. Just when scientists thought they'd seen it all, NASA and JPL analyzed the orbit and uncovered a staggering truth. Swan R2 returns every 22,554 years to visit our sun. This isn't a quick one-time flyby. It's a returning visitor on a cycle so long, it stretches far beyond the entire history of human civilization. Its closest approach to the sun will occur in October, the very same month 3i Atlas reaches its own perihelion. Two objects with anomalous properties passing near the sun within days of each other, one on a hyperbolic flyby, 
one on a bound 22,000-year loop for Lobo. The question shifted from, is this the same object, to is this a system? According to M. Lobo and his team, Swan R2 is not a normal comet, but an automated machine sent by an advanced civilization far older than ours. For them, a 22,000-year orbit would feel like a routine patrol. At near light speeds, time slows down for the traveler, so what looks to us like thousands of years could be only months to them. In this view, Swan R2's return isn't a fluke. It's an appointment. But why return on such a vast interval? In Lobo's scenario, each passage could be part of a scheduled maintenance cycle. Collecting super-hot plasma from the sun as fuel, adjusting huge sensor networks hidden around the planets, or downloading data from secret stations buried in the asteroid belt, under polar ice or even inside planetary crust. It might also check on parked spacecraft, refresh navigation beacons or update star maps. The sun may act as a power source or a navigation beacon, and the 22,000-year loop gives enough time for new information to accumulate before the next part. It could be a scheduled maintenance run, a resupply trip, or a giant data upload to a network of distant stars. In other words, what seems to us as an age-long mystery could be for them a regular service call, refuel, update, retrieve, and leave again on a timetable older than human civilization itself. Another possibility Lobo suggests is that Swan R2 has come to deal with 3i Atlas. If Atlas was a scout, Swan could be the heavy lifter, arriving to collect its data, recover its power core, or destroy it before humans get too close. Some even imagine the two objects are from opposing fractions of an ancient struggle, rival probes converging on our sun to control a critical resource. The sun's energy, magnetic fields and gravity could be essential for stabilizing wormholes or powering galactic networks. What we see as sunlight, they may see as fuel. Archaeologist Graham Hancock's team has given more unsettling reasons. He has noted that the last time Swan R2 passed close to the sun was roughly 22,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, precisely when humanity began creating monolithic structures and the earliest stars, the Great Pyramid, the massive stone blocks at Giza, the perfectly aligned shafts pointing to Orion. All of these may be echoes of an earlier contact, or at least an awareness of this cycle. In his model, ancient builders may have copied or memorized the patterns of these returning stars, encoding the arrival schedule of these probes into their architecture. The pyramid shafts pointing to Orion, the ancient calendars tracking precession, these may not be random cultural artifacts, but warnings and instructions passed down from a time when the last great visitor came close. This theory would explain the extraordinary precision of ancient structures, the sudden appearance of agriculture and mathematics, and the obsession with the sun in early civilization. If Swan R2's route has been fixed for tens of thousands of years, then the people who built the pyramids could have seen it with their own eyes blazing across the sky with a five-moon tail and built their monuments to mark its path. But Lobo defies this theory and raises the obvious question, why now after millennia of silence? There have been three anomalies in less than a decade, Umwamua, 3i Atlas, and now Swan R2. Lobo believes this timing may be a reaction to us. For more than half a century, humanity has been broadcasting its existence to the stars, radio and television signals, deep space radar pings, the Arecibo message, and the twin Voyager Golden Records drifting outward as a slow expanding sphere of data. By now those signals have washed over dozens of nearby star systems. In a Lobo scenario, that bubble of noise finally reached the right listeners, and their response wasn't a single craft but a sequence. First, a Moa Moa in 2017, a dark silent scout, then 3i Atlas, a nickel-bodied probe with a nuclear core, and now Swan R2, a silver plasma fortress with a power core rivaling black hole collisions, Lobo suggests this is no coincidence. Our transmissions may have triggered a dormant schedule or reactivated an ancient surveillance network. What we see as comets may in fact be machines sent to audit a new civilization that has just begun shouting into the dark. The golden record was a greeting. These could be the visitors arriving in reply. Its emergence from the sun's glare is a stark reminder of how fragile our observational net still is and how easily something vast can pass unnoticed until it's suddenly before us. What's striking is not only the object itself, 
but the broader silence surrounding these events. No government, no major space agency, neither in America nor in Europe, has yet treated such discoveries as matters of common concern. Official voices remain quiet, as if the less said the less responsibility they must bear. And yet the sky is not silent. Swan R2 and 3i Atlas are not just comets. They are signals, signs of the limits of our categories, of the need for new frameworks and perhaps of our own place in the cosmos that still resists us. It feels at times like the beginning of an ancient drama. The signs are there, but the chorus prefers silence. The risk is that by ignoring the oracle, we miss the lesson it carries. The cosmos will not wait for us. It speaks whether we listen or not. So which theory do you back?